Okay, so today I'm going to show you in City 2.6, we're going to go over the city spawners. So I've got this project I had set up with a bunch of different types of themes. I'm just going to set up a small scene here. We'll change the theme to Neo City. And this terrain was made using Gaia Pro, just FYI. I often use Gaia Pro uh, for quick setup of my scenes for the terrain and vegetation. So we'll click out some cells here. Get them a little tighter. Now every road has a city spawner uh, available to be added right in the window or on the road itself. So we'll go ahead and click out some roads. Just modify the spline on this one. Okay, so let's put a road out to the side here and this will be our test road, just so it's easy to see what's going on. So we'll give a little curve to it. Okay, so now when you click on a road, We'll blend that. Oh, uh, this is a good example to show. Uh, when you have Gaia and you're blending, it's going to go through the entire normal blend process. And then instead of doing the standard vegetation clearing, it's going to do a masking. And what it's doing is it's generating a texture mask, and then it automatically applies that to the biome spawner. So now it's going to mask Gaia. That's what it's doing. It's, it's updating each spawner. There's 11 for this uh, biome type. So it's masking it, and now Guy is going to run its spawning. So that's Guy running. And it's basically just rerunning all the spawners and now counting that mask. So it's going to mask off the road of elements, cells, et cetera. And now you can see the vegetation has been cleared. And it looks pretty good. Okay, so now let's click on a road. And scroll down to the bottom, you'll see the spawner add function, add spawner. Click that. Now it's add a spawner. We can change the spawn type. So I'm going to do power lines. Now this is built in. These these come with it with the, the prefab already made for you. We'll put spacing at 16. Now the default is centered. So we're going to actually offset that. So we go back to the spawner, path offset. We'll put an offset on here. You can go positive or negative, and that'll determine right or left. So there we go. That looks pretty good. And you can see it looks pretty nice. Um, so we'll add another spawner. Uh, we'll do mesh extrusion. There's a couple types. This is on guardrail. We'll, we'll spawn a guardrail. We'll just spawn it. Uh, we'll add a path offset. So we know we will need it. So five wasn't enough. We'll go a little bit more. I'm going to go off into the dirt. There's six. Okay. We go a little bit more, 0.5. Because I'm going to put chevrons between the guardrail and the road here in a moment. And the reason I like to do it that way rather than the chevrons behind it is so that whenever you're driving around, your car can run over the chevrons, the turn signs. You'll see what I mean here in a moment. So another thing is, um, obviously, the guardrail is the entire span of the road. We can change the range. So this normalized length range here. So we'll go 49 to 100. So now you can see it's on that section. We'll move it a little back away from that edge. We just want to get it around the curve. So right about there looks pretty good. So that looks nice. Okay, so let's add another spawner. We'll do another mesh extrusion just to kind of show you. And we'll do a barrier. We'll put a barrier right down in the middle. Um, okay, well, this is a two-lane road, so that barrier wouldn't be there. So let's, let's actually change this from a two-lane. Or, you know, we'll keep a two-lane. We'll just add the divider lane. We'll make it the same width as the lane. So there we go. So now there's a divider lane. So there we go. So now you've got a nice divider lane with a barrier in the center. And we'll change it to four lane just to show you what it looks like. So there's a four lane. Now I have to update the offsets. So the offsets will have to be updated for the telephone and the guardrail. So let's go to the guardrail. Update offset. Now let's do this power lines. Uh, 
and that looks pretty good. So, let's add another spawner, and this will be our prefab. Oh, wait. Yeah, so we'll do uh, prefab, and then now Chevron, the Chevron sign actually comes with City, so I can just look that up, and there's the prefab. We'll drag and drop it right into the prefab slot, and we'll do an offset and spacing of 12. I will make it eight and then 12 for offset. And there we go. So let's see. All right. So I'm going to bring my chevrons in a little. We also want to reverse direction. There you go. So now let's see the prefab has been flipped. So I want them to point in the direction of the turn. Uh, we'll also place them on the ground. So they weren't there before they were buying the height. They take by default, they take the height of the road. But we actually want these obviously to sit on the ground regardless of the road height. So now I'm going to blend. So it's going to run through two cells, and then all the intersections get blended. And now the roads will get blended. Now the more the more lanes, the longer that road will take to blend, obviously. So now it's going to update Gaia, because I have Gaia in this instance. So it's got to update the spawners, and then they will respawn, taking into account the new masking. Now, if you have a really large scene, obviously you're not going to want to blend a lot because it would be time consuming. So you're going to think about blending. You have to be strategic. So I'm probably actually going to put the rest of these on the ground as well. Um, yeah, see, so these are kind of floating. I don't need to re-blend after doing this. I can just slap them on the ground. So place on the ground, hit regenerate. Now it's on the ground. Perfect. Um, we'll do the same for the guardrail. And there we go. Now all three are on the ground. Now the barrier is fine because it's already on the road. It doesn't, so that's where we want it. So let's go ahead and move these chevrons to kind of equalize where the guardrail is, like you would see. Normally the turn signs would be a little bit smaller than the guardrail. We're gonna offset that on the inside. So I'm gonna make a little gap here. So we'll let's let's bring these. We'll bring those in. And point five that looks good and then we'll actually move this out point five a little bit more spacing there we go okay so that looks nice so you can get the point there move them up a little more towards the turn and that's the gist of city spawners in 2.6 now these are going to keep we're going to add more to these but these are all the defaults you can obviously populate any prefabs you want. These are the things that come with City that you can start doing now. Do a little fly through. Now this would be a fun little scene to throw a car in to show you. But right now I have the fly camera. I'll probably end up throwing a car in real quick. And we'll do a little drive around. But you can already see it's it's shaping into a nice looking scene. And yeah, for what not even ten minutes of time, it's a pretty good looking scene, I think. Um, it shows you the power of city and Gaia in unity in general. With the right assets, you can you can really get a, a good prototype and probably even game ready results. Okay, so I decided to throw a car in here. So I'm going to show you a little drive around. Now I'm using the uh, Eddie Physics car default. So forgive me for the sound of the engine, it may be a little high pitch. But I wanted to show you that. <laughs> I don't know why I like doing that. I like driving over these chevrons. It's fun. And that's that's part of City. It's already got those um, on collision physics. You can take them off if you want, but it's already on this. You can just flop them down and drive your object or character over them. 
and they'll physics activate and they'll fall over for you. And then they'll delete after some time. They'll destroy themselves. And you can smooth these roads out. If you think it's a little choppy, you can actually smooth them out. That's part of the um, road segment length when you click on a road. You can increase, decrease the number, which will increase the resolution. That's the amount of distance between. It's easy to tell. Yeah, it's a pretty good looking scene, I think. And, uh, this combined with city spawners, you can really start making some pretty cool roads that feel authentic. Oh. Cool. Yeah, this is the last tutorial for 2.6. Uh, there's more to come. And thank you for watching.